you know what? I'm just going to let this do the talking. <laughs> Oh yes! <laughs> Does that not bring a tear to your eye as you see Lilith crumble and die? Especially given the fact that I am level 85. Hello, my fellow sorcerers. I can't believe that I am about to say what I am about to say. But I am going to say it because it's true. It gets better. Ball lightning gets better. It gets so much better. Now, I should say, pure Arclash does not get better than the last build I presented to you, and pure Arclash is still the comfiest, easiest, and tankiest way to play Sorcerer in Season 2 while still absolutely crushing it. But I couldn't get the thought out in my head that yes, technically hard casting ball lightning does do a little bit more damage at the cost of the utility, the tankiness, and the comfort. But what if it didn't need to? What if there was a way to have your lightning cake and eat an electric slice too? And I am proud to say, ladies and gentlemen, that there is, there so is. With this hybrid Arclash and Ball Lightning on your bars take that lets you be an omnipotent force of nature. That lets you at, yes, level 85-ish like I am, Clear tier 99. I could do a 100, but I don't have a 100 key yet to actually try, but while you still get one shot by uh, some weird randomness that you can't really avoid, primarily because I am underleveled relevant to it, it's not really to do with any build or anything like that, any class would have this happen to them, but when you look at the speed, power, and ease at which I am blowing through, even regardless of that, it's a little bit silly. Not to mention, yes, utterly disintegrating Uber Lilith, and you can imagine what Duriel looks like in comparison. In any case, this really does give you that sweet spot, that best of both worlds. It is more damage than pure ball lightning, and it is just as survivable and fast as pure Arclash. Unstable Current still has essentially no cooldown, and you get to actually use your mana for damage without needing any mana affixes on your gear, so you remain all in on just doing as much damage as possible. There really is kind of no weakness to this, and it's hard to imagine any capacity at which this can get better than it currently is. I will most certainly be presenting an entirely different way to play Sorcerer if you're just feeling like, you know, experiencing life as a mere mortal, or, you know, life as one of the other classes and having a bit of fun next time. But this time, for now, well, get ready to experience not just the peak of Sorcerer, but the peak of builds so far in Diablo 2's history. Because it is not a reach to say that this is in the conversation for the single most powerful way any class has been able to play at any given point in the game's life so far. And that is something I never thought I would ever get to say around Sorcerer, but here we are. And it is beautiful. But before we get into it, I do want to reiterate that if you are enjoying uh, the pure Arclash way of ball lightninging that I presented last time, you are totally cool to do that. Don't feel like you have 
to switch to uh, this upgraded version because really this version I'm about to present exists for people that want to push the harder content as soon as possible at the lowest level possible. Like doing T100's Nuba Lilith from like level 80. But for content your level it really doesn't get easier or straightforward than the PRR Clash but having an extra button to press consistently is really nice too uh, when it gets that little bit of extra damage out while sacrificing none of the strengths of Pure Art Clash. So without further ado then, let's begin the path to total domination with the skill tree. Grab all your points in Art Clash as you might expect and then take it to Glinting. Truthfully, these two are kind of minor in the grand scheme of things now, but hey, every little does help and it's better to have them than spend the points elsewhere, but mainly we just want Art Clash to hit as hard as possible because we'll still be casting it a lot in this build. Over at your cause, we just want potent water for that extra tankiness to your elements, helps get to that 70% resist to everything without needing to put any gems in for it, which is one of the now real strengths of being a sorcerer. Oh, and yes, one lonely point in Chain Lightning, just so we can get it as our first enchantment slot, so go ahead and put that in. Then uh, we uh, move on to your defensives, where we get your flame shield, and and of course the movement speed and heal, just nice little upgrades to it, and hey, the movement speed directly means more damage while in your flame shield, so that's nice to look at it as a little steroid to press too, even if you're not in danger. Then we get our teleport, as it is just incredible, and it powers two of our legendaries that we will get to later. Then enhanced and shimmering for that extra damage reduction, and then we want ourselves Frost Nova with the vulnerable path as a vulnerable enemy is a dead enemy. One rank in elemental attunement just so it can happen, reset these cooldowns, press them more often, more barriers, more goodness, you know the drill. And then yes, over here, my currently 8 out of 3, but do put 3 into this ranks of glass cannon for a permanent passive near 50% multiplicative damage increase on everything that we do. We are so tanky, and yes I had all these eight ranks on in the Lilith in the tier 99 which you know in hindsight maybe that might have contributed to the odd random one shot but still you can see the kind of damage that this is really pumping into everything we are and is one of the best reasons to actually switch to this hybrid style to walk around with this much literal glass cannonage under your belt it's so nice to be able to take this at this extreme and not actually feel like we are weak or easy to kill. It's so, so good and I cannot overstate that enough. Then we go down to our Conjuration where yes, Lightning Spear is the sacrifice to get Ball Lightning on our bars, but we still do take Conjuration Mastery because with our Clash throwing out so many random shock skills during Unstable Currents and Lightning Spear being many of them, this is essentially a 10-20% to 20 permanent damage buff, which is obviously really good. We want as much lucky hit as possible for our, you know, lucky hit effects, and then now that we're spending mana, we can get Mana Shield, which is a really nice bit of damage reduction, and it almost entirely cancels out this much glass cannon by itself, which is really nice. Then we get the usual 3 out of 3 protection for constant massive barriers, and this, coupled with keeping Aklash, is why we're still nigh unkillable, but we will get to that. Over to your mastery, all 5 points, into Ball Lightning as, you know, the biggest single source of damage, and then Enhanced for the reason Ball Lightning is broken in the Season of Attack Speed. 200% of our Attack Speed bonus is ludicrous right now when we are sitting at near capped attack speed. And then, yes, wizards just to get crackling energy everywhere, which works for twofold. A, it's a glyph that we'll be getting later, and B, it powers invigorating conduit to get 12 mana per one we pick up, and is one of two reasons why we don't need to have any mana helping affixes on our gear and can go full damage, even though we are casting ball lightning. Then we go to our ultimate 
ultimate, grab your unstable currents, grab the godlike 25% attack speed, which, yes, means, you know, 50% uh, more damage rate on ball lightning. It's just, it's so much. And uh, then the infinite faster pulsing to reduce the cooldown of both, yes, unstable currents. But now, this with our overflowing energy key passive, which you want to grab, is also, of course, reducing the cooldown of teleport. And in this version of playing ball lightning, the hybrid style I'm showing you, you want to be teleporting as often as possible every cooldown. So we want it to be up as often as possible in order to do that, and we'll get to why in but a moment. Lastly, then, we want to get this 3 out of 3 conduction, more movement speed equals more attack speed equals more damage, and then electrocution just to be even tankier, really nice to have. So that is it when it comes to your skill tree, and then your second enchantment slot is going to be, of course, the ball lightning, just to spawn as many more of them as possible on top of people. It's just a wondrous little increase. Right then, before we get into how to play this then, I first want to go over our gear, because it ties in a lot with why we play it the way we will play it, so being able to set that up first is going to make things much easier to both explain and for you guys to understand. So with that said then, legendary aspects. You want your wand and focus, usual combo, though that said, if you have a dagger that is as good, or a dagger that's your best highest item power weapon, you can use that. The extra lucky hit on the wand is nice here, but it's not mandatory like it is in a lot of sorcerer builds, so the extra close damage from the dagger does come in handy, so basically just choose wand or dagger, you'll be fine with both. And then, yes, the chance for unstable currents to make even more shocks happen, 18% more ball lightnings is just 18% more damage. Not to mention the extra lightning spears is more damage, thanks to uh, the uh, conjuration mastery that we uh, pick up, and and, you know, more of our best thing is obviously great. Then we want Conceited still to do more damage while we have a barrier. We will always have a barrier, both from our cooldowns and from Unstable Currents throwing out Lightning Spears, thanks to Protection. And just to quickly get this out the way then, yeah, this is why we still remain very unkillable. When you press this and then you send out your Lightning Spears, every time you do so, you do get a barrier, as you can see as it counts as you casting it for the purpose of protection, and that's one of the reasons Arklash still being here is so good, as we have a way to spam out random skills with unstable currents much faster than if we were just pressing ball lightning, which means many, many, many more lightning spears, which not only means more damage of conjuration, it means infinite barrierage. In any case, we then want our self-control for the more damage to stunned and frozen. Everything is basically always stunned and frozen, so that is nice to see. Then we want ourselves gravitational as one of the big, main, in fact, the most important aspect. The ball lightning starts actually going round you and doing more damage for the privilege too. It's what makes this tick. Then on your gloves then, you want this accelerating. More attack speed when you crit with your core skills. Now, you might be there like, hang on a minute. We're not critting with any core skills because we're not casting any core skills. We're just doing our clash and we're just doing ball lightning. And yes, the core skills cast by unstable currents don't count for accelerating. Even if this randomly chooses chain lightning or charge bolts, it won't make this happen. Well, the reason that this is here is because we have the enchantment slot for chain lightning. Every two ball lightnings that we throw out will also do a chain lightning. And that chain lightning critting if it's from the enchantment slot, will make accelerating happen, and then 23% more attack speed to weave in uh, to uh, enhanced here is just insane and a massive increase to our damage. Then for our defensive aspects on our head, we've got Ever Living. Because every enemy on screen will be permanently vulnerable, this might as well just read you take 22% less damage, which is wonderful, and we'll get to why every enemy on screen is permanently vulnerable a little bit later. Then to our necklace, which is sadly no longer our unique cameo for two main reasons. Number 
one, we need the extra aspect space for disobedience. And this is very important, it gives us a colossal amount of sturdiness. Without this, we really would be doing a lot more crumpling to random melee hits. Having it extra 1.5 times strength on the necklace is what turns my 6k armor into about 13k when we're fully going, and it's what lets me, well, do the uh, tier 99 without getting one shot constantly. Just every now and then from things that, well, will one-shot a level 86 doing a tier 99. And it really works better than I can express. The second reason we have a normal necklace now is for the affixes, but we will get to that when we talk about the affixes. So, uniques then. I finally got my Raymond of the Infinite! And it wasn't even from Varshan, just a random nightmare dungeon, but... I'm not complaining. Yes, put on your Raymond of the Infinite on your chest. The ranks of glass cannon as we went over are huge. And uh, the rest of it is obviously brilliant. It's Raymond. The uh, teleport grouping stun is everything. If you don't have Raymond of the Infinite... Well, then you want to put on, yes, just a normal chest with a defensive aspect. If, like me, you will have disobedience on your neck, then instead of disobedience on said replacement chest, just put something like might on for some extra survivability, thanks to the Arclash keeping it constantly there. But also, if you don't have raiment, well, then you want to take a couple of points out of your skill tree and reallocate them elsewhere. Chiefly, you want to accept the drop of your extra lucky hit chance and then actually get a lightning spear to the stun bonus. That way the enemies will constantly be stunned and you can take full advantage of your bonus damage to stunned and your aspect of control. But now that I have Raymond and we're just constantly stun grouping, I can save the points on needing that so that's why they are not there. But that's the thing to bear in mind if you don't have it yourself yet. Then uh, we have Esu's Heirloom. In this hybrid version of the build, you can essentially just permanently keep Esu's Heirloom on as the extra crit chance and the crit damage is wonderful. The mana cost reduction actually does help because we are casting ball lightnings and the movement speed as ever is critical to power our extra attack speed and indeed its own extra crit chance boon. But if you are doing content your level or easier stuff and you just want more stable currents, then feel free to still just shove Flicker Step on and you will have a great time with that. But if you are doing anything difficult or single target bosses, you want Esu's Heirloom on and the pure clear speed of the sprint is really nice as well. Also, if you are doing easy content your level, instead of a helmet with Everliving, you can get away with Godslayer Crown, as that will clear everything even faster. This is what I would wear if I was doing, like, Nightmare Dungeons level 60, just to farm XP, as I'm not in danger of dying, and this will just group even more things, and be, well, a big increase to my clear speed. So, essentially, if you are doing something difficult, have one what I have just shown you, if you're doing something easy, replace Esu's Heirloom with Flicker Step and replace your helmet with Godslayer Crown. Then our last piece of armor is what makes this really almost possible. Yeah, I would get yourself a Tibalt's Will before trying this hybrid style, as this giving you 50 mana back every time you become unstoppable, which basically translates to every time you cast Teleport, boom, you get 50 mana back. That is what primarily lets you actually add ball lightning to your bars and cast it while are clashing without needing any mana management affixes, without needing mana cost reduction on your necklace, without needing resource generation on your rings. This really cannot be overstated as giving teleport gives you 50 mana is a really strong effect on top of, you know, just the 22% in my sad low rolls case, but this big increase of damage, again, every time we teleport. And the actual affixes on it are really nice too, but this really was what unlocked the idea for this hybrid style in my head. So let's actually talk affixes then. In priority order, your general just stat increases, you want crit chance, then attack speed, then 
cooldown reduction. Those are the holy trinity of this build. Following that, you want critical strike damage, critical strike damage with lightning, and vulnerable damage. Every damage increasing uh, affix after that is just equally fine, and then a little bit of lucky hit chance wasn't go amiss. You also want a good bit of extra maximum life, ideally on your rings, that makes a big difference for your barriers too. And then, very specifically, on your necklace, you want to get ranks of mastery skills and ranks of glass cannon. I have gotten very lucky with uh, this necklace, but either of them is still good, both is ideal, and then uh, the end of it all is movement speed. You want movement speed, everywhere you can get movement speed. So, on your necklace, and then the ones you will just have by default on your boots. After that, you can get whatever you happen to have. I happen to get this with the Lucky Hit Restore primary resource, but honestly, I really don't need it. It's just sort of there. That mana cost reduction should be a cooldown reduction, but I've just not got lucky with the enchanter yet. Then, uh, for your decorations, yes, the extra crit damage to vulnerable in your weapons, the rubies in your armor, and the armor in your jewelry, because we don't need any help with resistances, as we are essentially at the cap 70 and everything without that help. Then, when we go down to our movement speed, you want to get to 150%, ideally. Sadly, I've got a lower roll for movement speed on my necklace, so that would be higher. And then you want your cooldown reduction to at least be 30%, which it would be if I I could get the Enchanter to actually give me it on this offhand. Near 50% lucky hit chance combined is excellent too, and then you're essentially ready to go. So now with all that context set up then, this is how you play this. Flame Shield is reserved for I would like to not die here and just stand in the fire that I'm standing in and that is absolutely fine. Frost Nova is there for when you want to CC, specifically the freeze and the extra cooldown for the barrier, we don't need it for the vulnerable and we'll get to that so use it quite literally to freeze people and then teleport every single time teleport is off cooldown teleport to get the mana and the damage from Tibalt's will and to get the group stun from Raymond. Just teleport, teleport, teleport constantly as often as you can. Use unstable currents, essentially just constantly. It will be off cooldown most of the time, but yes, if you know there's a particularly dense pack of elites, etc. coming up, then you can hold off a couple seconds to make sure you have it for it, but other than that, it's quite straightforward. The little extra then it comes from having both Air Clash and Ball Lightning, and you might be like, well, which one do I do when? Essentially, you do both. You can be Ball Lightning and Air Clashing like you see here. I am Swipe, 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 and then whenever I have mana, I throw out a Ball Lightning. That's a very simplified version of it, but you can kind of see it in motion there. You will see on my, you know, actual gameplay uh, that the Air Clash is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 doing its bonus hits, that's how often I'm still swiping, while Ball Lightning is also being spammed out. Now, because Ball Lightning will keep creating crackling energy on the floor, thanks to Wizard's Ball Lightning, and collecting it will give us mana, essentially in combat you want to constantly be moving around to collect it. So you'll see in my Uber Lilith, for example, that I am constantly dashing through and around her to run over the extra crackling energy to get the mana to keep doing more ball lightnings while still spamming our clash against her as much as possible. That is kind of the goal here. Use your dodge and your teleport on cooldown to keep ending up in big patches of crackling energy energy to keep getting more mana to keep throwing out more ball lightnings while also air clashing. Essentially, you're just, if like me, you have air clash, left click, ball lightning, right click, you will be attacking the enemy by just pressing both left and right mouse click constantly together at the same time, and you will be doing both constantly. That is essentially the way here, and that's just a little bit more intensive than just air clash, which is why I said this is, if you want to do a little bit more, 
for a little bit more. Vampiric powers then, and this is where it gets very exciting as there are two new and different from pure R-Clash. We'll get to them, but the usual anticipation remains for an extra 20% cooldown reduction of unstable currents, that's still just too good to pass up. As is Ravenous for just massive amounts of permanent bonus attack speed. Remember, outside of just casting ball lightning and R-Clash faster, this translates to a colossal amount of pow thanks to enhanced ball lightning. Then we still have Moonrise. This is one of the real advantages to this hybrid style. Because we still get to our clash, we still get to stack up this attack speed, which means, yes, even more ball lightning damage. And the movement speed means more attack speed, which means, yes, even more ball lightning damage. And then the 160% our clash strength is still really felt, and you get a lot of damage out of swiping back and forth. The two new ones on the block then, replacing primarily Hectic, as we no longer are clash enough to really justify it, we also don't need the extra cooldown reduction, we are doing well enough without it, and we can get so much more damage leaving it on the sidelines. First and foremost, a Cursed Touch. Lucky hit chance to inflict a vampiric curse on enemies. This will essentially happen constantly, and is one of the reasons we still care about lucky hit on top of the ball lightning enchant. Then it will spread to other enemies, and the souls do more damage, but that's not really a huge deal, it's just nice. The main deal is our attacks give enemies the vampiric curse, which synergizes with prey on the weak. We do 16% multiplicative more vulnerable damage, which is amazing, but also enemies are vulnerable when they're affected by your vampiric curse. So these two together is why every enemy on screen is permanently vulnerable. We give them the curse, it spreads with all of our ridiculous damage sources going out, triggering the lucky hit, and now they're vulnerable because they're cursed and taking massively more damage. This is just amazing. And uh, weaving that into Moonrise and Ravenous, <laughs> the damage is silly as you have been seeing. So, uh, all that remains then is your Paragon board, which truthfully is almost identical to pure R-Clash. It doesn't really need any changing. I've swapped a few glyph locations based on me upgrading them to level 15 and more radius, but other than that, you're going to find this very much what you expected it to be. Start at the starting board, because you have to get to your rare nodes and the clusters around them, and then move up to your glyph slot, where you will put Adept for the increased size of Ball Lightning, which has a big effect, and then grab as much intelligence around the area as possible to amp the damage of it as much as possible. Once I get this to level 15 and it's got a bigger radius, then I will grab the extras too. Get your other rare nodes and the same relevant ones that I have. We don't need the decks, we don't need the willpower. And then move up to our next board, which is our enchantment master board. This is a straight right shot over to the glyph cluster. Get your extra non-physical damage and your extra resist. This really is a key component here. Alongside going up and left for even more non-physical damage and then diagonally across for even more non-physical damage. I can express how much these three nodes add to your output, and then the little extras around as well. Your glyph here wants it to be reinforced, to you uh, get it to level 15, get the increased radius so we can activate the bonus of more damage reduction while we have a barrier. This helps counteract glass cannon more, and we always have a barrier, so it's just really nice damage reduction while amping up our non-physical damage node for an extra 20% at this stage, which which is really good, as is the extra resist to all elements now. Then we head up here, go by this rare node and its extras, which will then lead us to the legendary node, Enchantment Master, so we fire off more chain lightnings for less mana, which means more accelerating uptime, and more ball lightnings will spawn on top of all of our enemies. Then after that, we go right from the glyph cluster into the next board, which is your ceaseless conduit board. 
not go down to begin with to get to the glyph and the galvanic catalyst for just more lightning damage in general which is really good more intelligence and the resist is nice too but mainly we want it for the extra intelligence the glyph here is going to be destruction and you want to activate it with the extra decks around the place to make the enemies take 12 percent more damage from you which is a large amount as it's multiplicative and then upgrade the glyph as much as possible while also getting as much dexterity in range as possible then we head up go by conduit here grab it and uh, the magic nodes then a further right grab resilience and its magic nodes and then down for the legendary node so our clackling energy just does a massive amount more damage it is worth the point investment to get here the not being triggered isn't as relevant as we just permanently have crackling energy with how the build plays then we go over back to the left and make our way in to this board, which is your Frigid Fate, your vulnerable board. Now our enemies are permanently vulnerable thanks to our vampiric powers. This has even more effect. Go straight down, get your oppressive rare node with the magic cluster around it. From here, you will go up and get the glyph slot as well as the weakness node and the extra vulnerable damage around it. And then also the chilling node, mainly for the extra intelligence and then we actually have our next glyph to put in which we will get to after that you want to go left out of here up and get frigid fate which will just give us in my case an extra 19 percent damage even though we're not actually invested in cold but it's just a nice little bump we also want to go left and get the damage reduction from vulnerable enemies to get even tankier after that you want to head back to here go up out in to this gate slot and now we will be getting our static surge board for all of the damage to stunned enemies you want to attach it like this you can go straight right and get paralyzing and the uh, magic nodes around it the extra mana does actually help now then go up to the glyph slot to getting both incapacitate and the magic nodes and electro but we don't need the extra lightning resistance so just the minimum amount of points to actually grab it then we can head north from the incapacitate cluster go straight left and get the more damage to stunned enemies and damage to elites cluster here and if you really want to you can get static surge but it doesn't make a huge difference so in our two unfilled glyph slots this one here and this one over here we want to be adding the following charged to give you a crackling energy and another boost but mainly to give you this permanent 15 percent multiplicative extra damage from constantly picking it up which we will be doing to replenish our mana anyway and then we want control to amp up the damage to stunned enemies even more after your raiment, etc, etc. There you have it then, everyone. An even more potent hybrid style of ball lightning that lets you do everything without any weaknesses you don't have to make any compromises you get both backlash and ball lightning and as you've been seeing it just utterly decimates and i can't really say more than that it is just perfect next time then we will try some different ways to play sorcerer in season two as it's still nice to branch out and actually experiment and you know not just permanently be ball lightning though i can't say i am not thoroughly enjoying it like you've enjoyed this subscribe hit the bell for more consider supporting the future of the channel on patreon down below and until we meet again a good bye <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye